Amen. But we are certainly going to, to miss, amen, Sister Reba. John chapter 8, John chapter 8, verse 30, and he spake these words. As he spake these words, speaking of Jesus, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews who believed on him, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, uh, some answered him, we be Abraham's seed, and we were never in bondage to any man. How can you say to us, you shall be made free? Jesus answered them, verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abided not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. My, my, my. Uh, Jesus is saying there, you want to be in my house? My God, know this, that a servant of sin can abide here. Amen. He will have to leave. But, but because I am the son of God, I abide forever. Verse 36. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Hallelujah. Our topic today is simply that. Free indeed. Free indeed. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. It's great to see you all out this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Came here to, amen, for communion service. And here we are on the very first Sunday of July, 2023. I got to tell you, when I first got saved in way back in 84, amen, I didn't think we'd see 2023. But it shows the mercy of the Lord that he has not come yet. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And so we thank God for that. As you see today, we're kind of running along the theme of amen this weekend and this week. As it is Independence Day. Independence Day is where Americans celebrate freedom from being independent of the bondage of another nation. But how much so for us? Of course, for us, every day is Independence Day. Amen. Because we have been made free from the bondage of sin and the kingdom of evil that we were in. When you look at Scripture from the Old Testament right on through Revelation, what we see here is Scriptures that are full of stories and examples of people being set free from bondage into a freedom in God. Of course, even in the Old Testament, all of this freedom really points toward Christ. There's, there's always the gospel uh, hidden in the Old Testament whenever, whenever anyone has been set free. It all points to the price that was paid for our freedom through Jesus Christ going to the cross for us. Now, I'm going to use one Old Testament example today that kind of makes that point, or certainly does make that point. And freedom is a wonderful thing. You see here in our scripture text here in John that Jesus is dealing with those who don't believe on him as being the Savior or the one that can set them free from the sin that they were in. And I have found that mostly he's dealing here with Pharisees and religious Jews in this, in this scripture text. And yet, even though they had some righteousness in the law, uh, Jesus still recognized the sin that they had of religious pride. It's religious pride when you say that you are close to God and you have righteousness but God in the flesh is standing before you and you don't believe in him. That means you're blinded, something's wrong. And that means you are caught up in your own righteousness, not understanding that any righteousness we have 
is because it was given to us by Christ. Amen. I, I, I've said this many times, and it is true that, amen, we, we like to think about what we used to do and how we are now, and we say, I'll never go back to that. But let Jesus pull away from you. Let the Holy Spirit pull away from you and leave you to yourself. We'll be right back in the pit that we were in before. Amen. It's only because of the goodness of God. It's only because of his power that keeps us and continues to forgive us. So Jesus here, as he's going through this, he's, he's reaching to them and uh, he, he's in this discourse trying to get them to see that you are still in your sin. You might say you're Abraham's seed, but that's not something to be prideful about. You still need to be delivered. And he went on later in this text to see, even Abraham saw my day and rejoiced. But you don't see it. So if you truly were the children of Abraham, you would see what Abraham saw. And even though I'm standing before you, you refuse to see it. He talks about real freedom. Jesus says you will be free indeed which means you'll really be free. You'll truly be free. That, that, amen. This is the real freedom, not a freedom that you think you have. So we're going to use an example today, a very familiar passage of Scripture. Amen. And um, I'm not going to go to, through it extensively, but we're going to be in 2 Kings chapter 5. 2 Kings chapter 5. And here we have the story of Naaman the leper. Now notice here in 2 Kings chapter 5 and verse 1, it says, Now Naaman, a captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master, and he was honorable, because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. But he was a leper. This is amazing because we see here his resume. And, and what I see in this today is this, is that we may even have our own resume, reputation, achievements that we have, amen, before we come to Christ. But the bottom line, regardless of all the achievements, he said he was a leper. Now, leprosy is a type of sin. So for us, that would mean that, amen, we may have achievements in, achievements in the world, but still bound by sin. This is an amazing story, even, even just this scripture, because he's the captain of the army of Syria, which Syria, uh, those of Syria serve false gods. They serve idol gods. They're not in covenant relationship with God. And in fact, they were an enemy to God's nation. And yet, it says, Scripture tells us that he was considered a great man. He was famous. He was well respected in Syria. He was honorable, which means he was faithful and a trustworthy man. And Scripture even says that his blessing of his achievements came because God blessed him. That's deep. God blessed the enemy. Of the nation of Israel. He blessed him to have favor in battle as a captain of the army. My God. And it says he was a mighty man in valor, which means this was a man that was great in battle and he had great courage. This would certainly be a man that the king of Syria would want and depend on. But we have a serious problem. He's a leper. He's diseased and he's dying. He has a, a skin disease that eventually leads to death. And it's a process of, amen, your skin being consumed by uh, whatever leprosy is. And it, it will even numb out your nerve endings. So oftentimes you, you get cuts and you bleed and you don't even feel it. And and so you leave it alone, and infection happens, and, and you start, have to start cutting things off, and eventually it will lead to death. 
Isn't that interesting? That's the way sin is. Amen. After a while, you can be in so much sin, you don't even feel the conviction anymore. You don't feel the guilt. In fact, you make it your reputation. Amen. Here's when you're in trouble, when you get bold with your sin. You don't care who knows. That means you're in great bondage. You need to be set free because you're dying and you don't even know. Sin is always going to lead to death, especially when it relates to eternal life. You have to understand that everything in this life, though it's vital that we make the right choices, especially concerning accepting Christ as our Lord and Savior, but everything in this life, regardless of your achievements, how much money you've made, what you've done, it won't mean anything if you're not saved today. Oh, they'll say something maybe at your funeral about your greatness and what you were good at. But amen, but amen, it's all over. You, you've had the best it's ever going to be, and now your eternity will be in torment because of the bondage of sin. It goes on to say that in 2 Kings chapter 5 and verse 3, it says, And she said unto her mistress, the she there is a servant that they had, a, a young lady in the house who actually was from Israel that knew of the prophet Elisha and said, I wish to God that my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. Thank you, Jesus. She is saying there, even though she's been taken in as a slave, she says to her mistress, which really means it, this was the wife of Naaman, amen, I wish that Naaman would go and see the prophet Elisha and he would be healed of his leprosy. That's a great word. Now, she could have kept her mouth shut and had an attitude. You know, I know who could heal him, but I ain't saying nothing because you got me as a slave up in this house. Which means that she had some compassion and she saw all that Naaman had to go through. You see, when Naaman would leave his house, he would have on all his captain's suit, his garb, his uniform, his medals, his, his ribbons. He, his leprosy was covered up with all of his personal glory. That, that's, that's the way it is with sin. We, we know how to cover it up. But, but if we took away the outer shell, amen, and look at the soul, we'll see a decaying, rotten, dying soul because of sin. But she saw him when he disrobed in the house. She saw his skin being eaten up. And she had compassion on him and said, oh, if you would just go to the prophet Elisha. Amen. Which means this, this speaks of the great hope that we have in God to be set free. There's always a hope. This looks like a hopeless case. Leprosy, there was no cure for it. It's hopeless. Naaman's on his way out of here. He's going to die eventually. A slow, painful death. Which is what sin does to you. But now hope comes that Amen, that if you would go to Elijah, Elijah would give you a word of God since he's a prophet, amen, and it will heal you. And here it is. Here's the gospel always in the Old Testament to understand this, that that word that the prophet speaks is the power of Christ. It's the power of the gospel because Jesus is the word. John 1 and 1 says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. John 1, 14 says, and the Word became flesh. The Word came down in a body and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. If he would just go to the prophet and get a word, he would be healed. It, it is amazing. Uh, there's so lot in this story, even with this young little maiden. 
to give that word because it was really that word that set him on the journey to be healed. So let's just go down to verse 9. We're skipping a lot here, but let's go to 2 Kings 5 and 9. It says, so Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot, and he stood at the door of the house of Elisha. Now Naaman hears this word. He, he gets permission from his king. Amen. He sends a letter to the king of Israel to let him know that I'm coming. I'm not coming for, for a fight. I'm not coming to battle. I'm just coming to see the prophet. And so Naaman does, he responds to the word of hope. And he goes and makes his way. But Naaman still wasn't fully delivered even though he went. Watch this. So he stands at the door of the house of Elijah, verse 10, and Elisha, he sent out a messenger unto him, saying to tell him, go and wash in Jordan, the Jordan River, seven times, and your flesh shall come again to you, and you shall be clean. My God, there is a word of healing right there. But notice what it says in verse 11, because Naaman, even though he has sin, he has leprosy, Name is still full of pride. I mean, there's a possibility I could get healed here, but and name is thinking, why do I got to come to enemy territory? Why do I go to go through all these changes just to be healed? Verse 11, but Naaman was wroth. Naaman was angry. And he went away and said, behold, I thought that the prophet would surely come out to me he would stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. <laughs> Notice Naaman talks about himself in the third person. He, he can't even admit to himself that he is the one with leprosy. And I, I, I came all this way. I brought these men, and I got my chariot, and, and amen, I got all of this stuff, and I came here to see the prophet, and the prophet won't even come out to see me? Does he know who I am? Does he know what I can do to him? I could burn down this house. But, bro, you, you, you got leprosy, and this is the only one that can help you. You... You need to tone down the rhetoric and just receive the word that brought you here for your healing. You see, this is us still trying to handle our sin problem on our own. This is like you have a sickness or an illness and you go to the doctor and the doctor says, I got something that can cure you. Just take this every day for 10 days. And I promise you, we have all the studies, you'll be healed. I'm sorry, I don't take pills. What? This is what's going to heal you. If you don't take these, amen, you're gonna, this illness will eventually kill you. And you're going to suffer. Yeah, it, it, it's funny. It sounds dumb. It sounds like, what, man? Get it together. But... He's angry. Notice what he wants. He wants, he wants a scene. I mean, he's got all his men with him. I, I got a reputation here to uphold. I thought for sure the prophet would come out and look at me and, and say a great prayer to his God and, and strike the heavens to come down and heal me. And he sends a servant to tell me to go dip in the muddy, ugly Jordan River seven times. He had the nerve, the scripture just read, we just read it, that amen, he, amen, he decided to leave. He said, I ain't doing that. I'd rather stay with my leprosy. My God. But thank God for the other servant in verse 13. And the servant came near. This is his servant and said, uh, my father. Notice the respect the servant has toward him to name. And he says, now, if the prophet told you to do some great thing, wouldn't you have not done it? 
I mean, if the prophet would have told you and gave you a list of 15 things you need to do, you would have gone out and knocked out all 15 to get your healing. But then when he says, just go to the water, wash and be clean. He's kind of saying, what is the problem? Verse 15, and he returned to the man of God, he and all his company. Oh, I'm sorry, verse 14. Then he went down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. My God. Here's the beauty of God when he takes away our sin problem. We become childlike again. Our innocence is restored. It, it takes away sin, but it also takes away the effects of sin that it has had on us. Amen. This is an amazing thing because I don't know if any of you have any uh, little babies in your life. Amen. But certainly Lady G and me do. Amen. And it's just so great to smell them. Anybody know what I'm talking about? They just smell so good. It, it's that innocent, fresh skin. It's nice and soft. Amen. Doesn't need a lot of lotion at all because it just, it's young, innocent skin. And, and you can't help but to hold the baby up to your raggedy, rough skin. I'm talking about myself. Raggedy, rough skin. Just to feel that, oh, my granddaughter, oh, baby, this is wonderful. I love you. Yeah. Amen. And then she comes and she'll feel your skin and go, ooh. <laughs> Don't feel like my skin, right? She's, yes. That's what God will do for us if we'll just be obedient to his word. How difficult is it really? Look at the plan of salvation to come to Christ is simple. Just change your direction toward Christ. That's repentance. Be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He promises the gift of the Holy Spirit. Another says, how come and I'll live in you and dwell in you and be with you to get you through this life because I have a greater place for you in eternity. And yet, people still say, why well, I got to do all that? That's the root of sin. The root of sin is pride. And where we really need to check ourselves is, do I have pride? Because here's what can happen. You can go from the pride of being in sin to the pride of religious sin. Uh. Pastor, I've been Holy Ghost filled for 39 years. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, that's pride right there, right there. No, Christ has kept you for 39 years. You ought to praise him and thank him for his keeping power, all the grace he's given you, and all the mercy every day he had to bestow on you. My God. Well, then what happens is Naaman is free from his leprosy. And he makes a wonderful declaration in his life that he says this, from now on, I will only serve the God of Israel because he is the true and living God. <laughs> All of a sudden, he has some sensitivity, right? He even goes and he says to Elisha, he gets a message to him and says, look, look, when I go back to Syria, and my king bows before idol kings. He says, I'm going to have to bow with them because that's who I serve. But please understand this, that when I bow, I'm not worshiping that. Amen. I'm going to be worshiping your God, the God of Israel, who has set me free and delivered me. Amen. And I, and, and I don't care about those idol gods anymore. But so I don't lose my head. Amen. I will bow down with him. But there's no question that your God is the only true and living God. So there's three points I want to make here before we go into our communion. The first one is that you have to understand that you are free in the spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Second Corinthians 3.17 says, Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 
Amen. That's just another word for saying there, that's where there is freedom. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Isn't it great to know you're free today? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Holy Spirit is with you, and you are free, which means you are free from the control of sin. You're free from the control of another. Thank you, Jesus. We are emancipated from bondage, the bondage of sin because of Christ and the Spirit of Christ, which is the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We're free today, and we are free indeed. Thank you, Jesus. Which means this, the devil, Satan, the kingdom of darkness has nothing on you anymore. You've been made a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That's free indeed. Amen. Sometimes you got to remind yourself because sometimes we don't always feel free. But I'm free. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm free. Number two is what is your response to this freedom? Oh my. Galatians 5, 13 and 14 says, For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. You've been called unto freedom. Only use not freedom for an occasion to the flesh. But by love, serve one another. This is our response. Our response is, ooh, well, I got the blood of Jesus on me. Let me just do whatever I want now. And frustrate the grace of God. No, no. Walk in that freedom. Amen. And it says here, don't give occasion to the flesh. Can I tell you something? You're saved. I'm saved. But our flesh is not saved. You got to make this flesh do right. Amen. How many of you are considering since, you know, this is kind of a long weekend going into the 4th of July. Amen. For some people, it's a four-day, five-day weekend. And so since I'm kind of on a mini vacation, I think I'll just stay home today. Anybody? Anybody? Yeah. All right. Amen. I mean, I got to get the ribs together. I got some prepping to do. We're we going to have a great meal. Amen. And so, yeah. Amen. Come on. Come on. Raise your hand. How many do thought I'll just stay here? I know there's more than three of you. Don't lie. Come on. To tell the truth. That's the flesh. The flesh wants to stay in bed. The flesh likes to have leisure. The, the flesh will say we can just watch it online, but amen. It, it's hard to watch it online, amen, when, when the bacon in the pan is making so much noise you can't hear. Uh. So, so he says this, amen, don't give occasion to the flesh. But walk in the freedom, amen. How many of you knew, amen, there's communion today. I got to be in the house of the Lord. I thank God for the freedom he has given me. I want to remember God, amen. So flesh, get up, amen, get changed, amen. Get your clothes on and get to church. goes on to say in Galatians uh, 5 and 14, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So watch this. It is important for us to understand this, that freedom that we have in Christ without love is really selfishness. And you can't be free and selfish at the same time, not when your freedom has come from Christ. We have to learn how to love one another. But if you walk in the freedom that you have and understand every day, hallelujah, that I'm free from sin today because of Christ, it's not hard to love your neighbor. To, to, to amen, to, to have a, an unselfish concern for others. 
to, to try and give them a taste of the love and the freedom that you have received from Christ because you should have so much appreciation for the freedom Christ has given you, amen, that you want to pass that on to someone else so that they will be drawn to the God that you serve and that they will be free also. In other words, he's saying here, use love to bring others to the same freedom you have. That has to be our response. Thank you, Jesus. And the third one is stand in your freedom. You got to stand in your freedom. Galatians 5 and 1 says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty and the freedom where for Christ has made us free. Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. That's deep. A yoke is what they put on oxen, and so what they would do, there would be a head ox, and then they, they would take the other oxen and yoke them to the head oxen to teach them how to walk straight and plow a field. They, they couldn't get away from the yoke. The yoke attached them to the other one around the neck. There was no breaking free. You couldn't say that, that younger oxen couldn't say, I don't feel like plowing today. Uh-uh, you going with the, the big oxen, the main oxen, because you're yoked to him. Mm. He says here, don't be entangled again. Don't be, amen, bound by the yoke of bondage. I'm thinking maybe today we might have a little testimony service. And part of that testimony service might be this, to remember what was the yoke of bondage you used to be yoked to? You don't have to go far to think about that. Just think about it like this. Before you were saved, what would you be doing at 1035 on a Sunday morning? After what you just did on Saturday night, what would you be doing on a Sunday morning? I can tell you for me, I had a choice to make. Do I do something to get rid of this hangover? Or should I just stay drunk? That was my choice on a Sunday morning. And I remember back in that day, I would turn on 92.5. All hungover. Going to get a beer for breakfast. To try and, you know, get my groove on again. To the Commodores or Earth, Wind, and Fire, looking for that song. Easy like Sunday morning, fly away. Just, just you know, trying to get it on again. Amen. But thank God for freedom. Thank God I'm not yoked to that anymore. Instead, I was up this morning at 6.30 praising God and getting in my word and going over my notes and, amen, just thanking God for the freedom. Hallelujah. Amen. In my right mind, not hung over. Hallelujah. But looking forward, amen, to seeing the saints in the house of God celebrating and praising our God. Because we're free today. We're free indeed. But it says this, we still have to make a choice to walk in the freedom that we've been given by Christ. So you got to stand in the freedom. You see, God set Israel free from the bondage in Egypt, but that first generation still had a desire to go back to bondage again. They had a slave mentality. They didn't stand in their freedom. They didn't walk in their freedom. They weren't excited about the new things they would have in God. And instead, they, they yearned for bondage again. They, they wanted to eat leeks and garlic and onion. They actually had the nerve to say, we're tired of this bread called manna from heaven. Take us back to raw onions. Have you lost your mind? Slave mentality. We got to stand firm in the freedom 
And, and here's what I love about God. You got to stand firm in everything God has imputed into you, given to you. Not only did he give you freedom from sin, but he gave you spiritual gifts. He gave you a heart with passions. He gave you abilities to do things in his kingdom. Amen. He gave you a personality to use, to witness to him. And he gave you experiences, even all the bondage experiences, to help give hope to someone else that they would be set free also. Hallelujah. And so I ask you today, what has God set you free from? Anyone, anyone willing to admit that? Amen. I'll give, I'll give you a short list of me. Testimony service is now open. Today I declare my freedom that God has set me free from drunkenness, alcohol abuse, profanity, fornication, being a liar, and a thief. Like I said, that's the short list. We don't got time for all of it. <laughs> but I stand here today to let everybody know I am free from all of that. I'm free by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm free because the comforter lives and abides in me. I'm free today because of the love and mercy of God. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Testimony service is open. Anybody else? Come on, man. Come on. Amen. Now, if you testify, don't sing. And if you sing, don't testify. <laughs> and you see how I gave God glory in about one minute? Okay. Here you go. Praise the Lord, everyone. Uh, God delivered me from an 11-year addiction to crystal meth. <laughs> and September, this, September 1st this year, I'll be celebrating 11 years free from crystal meth addiction. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Free indeed. Free indeed. Okay, we have two past sinners in the church right now. Who else? Come on down. Come on down, whoever you are. Come on down. Run down here. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hello, everyone. Um, God set me free from being a drug addict since I was 19 years old. And throughout my marriage, I was taking pills. I was a great mom, but I was always filled out. Um, and then he set me free. Today, I have a job where I have the opportunity to um, preach to people that I pick up from jail. And then um, it's a company that we help them get back on their feet uh, when they get out of jail. So I have the opportunity to share my stories. Part of my job is to share my testimony and give the glory to God. God will use our experiences when we were in bondage to help someone else. Free indeed. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Amen. Denise, can you do this in one minute? Okay. I have more than one testimony. <laughs> I have pick up, oh, this, this is one that you don't know about. I cropped everything. I wanted my mother's love so badly. I would do anything to um, make my mom love me. So this one you do know about. So I told her by my family that my dad raped me to get my mother's attention. So I kept this lie inside of me for 40 years. And then finally, I told my family the truth because I lied. But I couldn't bear it, so I tried to commit suicide. I took, started taking thyroid pills because I heard it made you skinny. My mom was always about being thin and 
what you wore and how you looked, and I didn't want any part of it. So I would go to Mexico back then when you could go to Tijuana, and I would start getting thyroid pills, and I was up to 32 th thyroid pills a day. I got down to 85 pounds. I was admitted in the hospital with congestive heart failure on the brink of death. <laughs> but finally, I told my mom the truth, what it was. Still didn't get her love. She passed away this last year, and I was relieved. I was happy. I don't want to have that guilt, <laughs> but God delivered me from death because he wants he has a purpose for me. <laughs> Free indeed. Hallelujah. My God. How many of you got the, I tried to take myself out testimony. Ah, uh, Okay. God will set you free. Come, anybody else? Amen. Come on. Okay, Jim, one minute. Okay. In 87, I had, was pregnant twice. I had an abortion earlier in um, 87. I got pregnant again. I was about to have another abortion. And um, God con con convicted me. And I had Carita in December. So, um, Exactly three days before I was baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost, on a Thursday, I was saved on a Wednesday Sunday. God delivered me for six and a half years. I, was, I, was, had, I thought I was going to go to hell because I had four abortions in my life, and I just knew I was going to go to hell. But three days before I got saved, God took all that away from me, and I thank God. Free indeed, he'll take it away. Hallelujah. Free indeed. Anyone else? You guys are doing great. Anyone else? Anyone else? Come on, come on, come on. Set yourself free today. Hallelujah. God has been good. Amen. Amen. Pastor Miz, you want to tell us about your toward past? Amen. <laughs> come on up, brother. Come right here. You know, God has delivered me from a, a lot of things, but um, God has mainly delivered me from a twisted mentality. Grew up thinking my skin was my sin. I had two stripes against me, so I was mean mugging. And I started a gang in North Park. But by the blood of the Lamb and being washed in the blood and being baptized in Jesus' name, I went from running the streets in North Park to serving God in North Park. We're overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. Free indeed. Look what God will do. Look what God will do. When I was young, back in 1980, I had a friend named Haley, Henry Haley. And he had went to church, and he had got baptized. And we were standing about maybe six of us. And back then, I was a bitch with marijuana smoker. Drinking, cheating, gossiping. And Henry just kept on going on about uh, trying to get one of us to come to the room and accept the Lord. And uh, just so he would shut up, I said, come on, Henry, let's go to the room. And we got down on our hands and knees, and we began to pray. And I didn't say it out loud. I said it in my mind. I said, if there is a God, if you got it, we was on our knees for a long time, on my knees for a long time. I said, if there is a God, you'll come down right now, because if you don't, I'm not going to believe in you. But as soon as I got done with that thought, the Lord came down. Yes. And I heard a thought, he said, be thou not afraid, because I was scared. I've never experienced something. But I'm here to tell you, I am the living flesh, that God is real. Yeah. 
Free indeed. Hallelujah. I want to read this for you, and then uh, we'll uh, go into our, our communion. Thank you, Jesus. And this was sent to me by Jim Cassell. Jim, raise your hand. Amen. So, so Jim, oftentimes in his morning meditation, he'll get something from God, and he'll oftentimes send me what God has given him. And so this is what he, this latest one he sent me. It says, the Declaration of Dependence Day. We the people, struggling daily with sin, deceit, and evil in this carnal world, hereby declare this day, July 4th, as Dependence Day, where we publicly announce our dependence on you, God, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We announce that in our house we are still one nation under God. We commit that our dependence will be entirely on you, Father, and the saving grace of our Lord Jesus, and on your word as spoken to us through the Bible, the only truth that carries significance in this world for all eternity. We commit our house to continue in prayer for this carnal world, to reach out to, your, to, reach out to you daily with our prayer and petitions, to trust in you for all things through all the trials and tribulations of the world, to be guided and comforted by the Holy Spirit daily, to shine a light in the darkness of this world, a light of hope for the future, a light of forgiveness for all those who come in faith to accept the pr priceless gift of salvation paid by our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, once and for all time. Father, we know that there will be wars and rumors of wars and natural disasters before the end comes. So prepare us for these tribulations to come and we pray daily for the loss, that there is still time for the lost sheep to be led back to the shepherd and accept Jesus as Lord and Savior for before the end of days. Our prayer is lifted up to you daily. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. Amen. At this time, I'm going to ask Pastor Missouri to come forward as we uh, get ready to uh, take communion. We're, well, we're so glad you didn't stay at home today and perhaps listen to the Commodores or Beyonce or Drake, but because this is a very important moment in the service. When we approach the Lord's table, I think we ought to approach the Lord's table with a fresh appreciation of what he's done. Never take this thing lightly or find it common because it represents the body that was broken on the cross and it represents the blood that was shed for you and I. And there's power at this table. In fact, Jesus makes reference to it in the Old Testament and he companions it in the New. Psalms 23, to be exact, is the same table that he talks about in Psalms 23. He makes reference to it concerning the Lord's table, Holy Communion. Psalms 23 and 5, he says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Now, I know my head with oil and my cup runneth over. What is it saying is that, yes, you're going to be in, in this world facing, facing evil. But guess what? If you partake to what, what God has given us, his presence will be there. He said, I'll prepare a, 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 a table for you in the presence of your enemy. His presence will be there. His oil will be there. His enabling grace, his anointing, and his cup would be there, which represents the blood that covers us, that protects us, that keeps us, that watches over us because there's power at this table. It also represents the Passover going from death to life. And as the pastor just mentioned, from bondage to freedom. I'm reminded of Exodus chapter 12 when God gives specific instructions concerning the Passover, speaking to the children of Israel when they were coming out of bondage. He tells them to do something strange but powerful. He says, I want you to take unleavened bread and I want you to partake of it. And then I want you to go and kill the lamb. And here's what I need you to do. I want you to take the blood and put it on the doorpost and put it on the top. Notice he didn't say put it on the threshold because we never trample over the blood. We never crucify God afresh. And if I can stop and, and speak parenthetically, whenever you're not living a life that God has designed, 
you're trampling over the blood. Whenever you're not striving for the mastery, you're trampling over the blood. Whenever you have bitterness and strife and envy, you're trampling over the blood. But he said, put it on the doorpost and put it on the top. And when I see the blood, uh-huh. I will pass over you. And because of their obedience, guess what? Sickness had to pass over them. Lack had to pass over them. Shame, guilt. They went into a wealthy place all because of the blood of the lamb and because of the bread. Because there's power at the table. And I guess what I'm trying to say this morning is we make this thing called faith visible when we partake at the table. Yes. That's good. Most of the things we do in church, we walk by faith and not by sight. Whatever we do in secret. God rewards us openly. But when you partake at the table, it's something that everybody sees and it activates your faith. Just like in the children of Israel. Once they were obedient, the Bible says they became what? The head and not the tail. Mm -hmm. Above and not beneath. Lenders and not borrowers. And when the enemy come and tried to to come at them one way, the Bible says he fleed seven ways. Why? Because of the power at the table. So, As we partake today, I want you to come with a fresh expectation, believing God to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Because he paid it all that we might have it all. The thief came not, but to steal, kill, and destroy. But he, he came that we might have life in that more abundantly. So get your faith up today as we partake at the Lord's table. Believe God for the unexpected. Because there's power at the table. I never know where you are, the precious Lamb of God. So we sing now. Lord Jesus. And I claim you to be the Lamb of God. We call upon your name this morning, O oh God, as we prepare to take this communion, O oh God. We're asking their blessings to be upon it right now, my God. As we pray, O oh God, over this bread, O oh God, help us to remember the purpose for which it we take it, O oh God. Let your blessing be upon it, O oh God. It represents your body, O oh God. Lord Jesus, bless it right now. Bless this fruit of the vine, O God, for what it represents, O God, the blood for which you shed, O God, for us, O God, for our sins, O God. Bless it as we partake it, O God. Help us to remember, O God, all that you've done for us, O God. Let your blessings be upon it today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Please remember the grape juice will be in the center for those that desire that, and the fruit of the vine will be on the ends. Now behold the Lamb. Now behold the Lamb. The precious Lamb. The precious Lamb of God. Born into sin. Born into Precious Lamb of God. 
you for the lamb. Thank you for the lamb. The precious lamb of God. The precious lamb of God. Why you love me? Why you love me? Precious Lamb.
love me when I'm right. You love me. Why you yeah. love me so I shall never know. You keep forgiving me over and over and over again. Oh, yeah. Why you love me so I shall never the precious, know. The precious, Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for your precious blood and your body that was broken. Lord, when you were at the table with your disciples before you went to the cross, you took the bread and you broke it. And you say, this is my body, which is broken for you. Eat it. And as often as you do, you do it in remembrance of me. Eat your bread. When supper was ended, he took the cup. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant that is shed for many for the remission of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Take your cup. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give God a praise right now for your freedom. You're free indeed. Hallelujah. Thank God for free. Hallelujah. He who the Son has made free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Thank you. Come on, just worship him right now. Just thank God. Thank him right now for your freedom. Thank you that he shed his blood. Thank you for his broken body. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. Come on and shout oh, shout oh, oh that men would praise the Lord, oh magnify the Lord with me. Come on and sing oh. Hallelujah. Now give him praise for the blood. Come on, if you appreciate what he did on Calvary, let's lift him up. Let's bless his name. He paid it all that we might have it all. Amen. You may be seated. We do have a few announcements. We have about three announcements. Uh, so if you can please direct your attention to the screen so we'll see our announcements, what's going on in the life of our church. We'll come back up and dismiss you and receive our offering. Good morning, North Park. We hope that you have enjoyed the service today and that your soul has been filled and your spirit has been lifted. Here are your announcements for the week. What's up, family? It's been a minute, but you already know what this announcement is about. Today, right after service, we'll be selling coffee, hot or ice, as well as hot chocolate for our impact kids and also for some of our adults who are hot chocolate lovers as well. For everyone who brought a Common Ground coffee mug, your coffee is $1 off with free refills. Today's cafe is set up in order for us to have fellowship and community, so please come and stop by, grab some refreshments from us, and stay for a minute or two. Thank you for your constant love and support. Remember, love God, love others, serve others, and share the gospel. We love you, and we'll see you right after service. If you're single and looking for fun, good fellowship, and food, meet the singles on July 4th at Sean Christian's house, located at 2861 Ridgeview Drive. 
San Diego, California, 92105. Again, Singles Potluck, July 4th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Sean Christian's house, 2861 Ridgeview Drive, San Diego, California, 92105. North Park presents Midweek Service with Pastor Cedric Balfour on Wednesday, July 19th at 7 p.m. Come on out and join us for a night of praise, worship, prophecy, and word. Again, July 19th at 7 p.m., special guest speaker, Pastor Cedric Valtry. Well, those are your announcements for the week. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Remember to love God, love others, serve others, and share the gospel. Hallelujah. But do you enjoy yourself in this morning, this service on our first Sunday, Communion Sunday? Amen. When we share common union with God. What a sweet spirit in this place. Amen. Before we give, I do want to highlight the fact that we do have a guest all the way from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Demir Whiting. Demetrius is his father. Demir, where are you, Demir? There he is. God bless you, young man. Thank you so much for coming. Come on, y'all. You can do better than that. Let's celebrate him one more time. Amen. 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 Well, we're going to let you go, but before we let you go, I do want to let you know that uh, because of the holiday, office will be uh, closed tomorrow and Tuesday and observing for um, Independence Day. We know it's uh, a beautiful summer out here, so we want you guys to enjoy yourself. Be safe. Eat a lot of food, and then work out at night. Take care of the temple. But we want y'all to enjoy yourself. Amen. Are y'all ready to give? Yeah. Let's stand. It'll be a blessing to the house of the Lord. And please see um, the uh, cafe, Common Ground Cafe, right after service. They're serving some uh, hot coffee, hot cocoa, and I think they have some treats out there. So you can start your holiday weekend off right. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we love you today. And God, we thank you, God, for just your presence in this place. And God, yes, we're rambunctious. Yes, we're radical, but it's just the sound of freedom. For whom the Son set free, he's free indeed. And we just thank you, God, for setting us free. Oh, God, for causing your Son to shed his blood that we may have right to the tree of life. We celebrate you today, and we'll remember you this week. God, we ask you to bless this offering, bless the gift. And bless the giver. For you say you give seed to the sower and, and bread to the eater. God, you know, God, as stewards at this church, God, we purpose in our heart to not only love God, love others, but to serve others and share the gospel. And we'll use the funds for that purpose intended. Now, as we leave this place, but never from your presence, go with us, be with us until we meet again. Now, may the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he make his face shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you and lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We love you. God bless you. Have a great week.